the unveiling at the unveiling we are unveil our true self you see I am not who you think that I am. My name is Vikram Gandhi, and I wasn't always a guru. That's me. Yep, pretty cool. And my brother was pretty cool, too. I come from a long line of religious Hindus. Like many first-generation immigrants, my parents were determined not to let America's great melting pot dilute our Indian traditions. So they immersed me in Hindu mythology, Indian philosophy, and endless ritual. Most American kids my age worshipped Hulk Hogan, but I was exposed to a whole different set of heroes. At times, these ancient rituals seemed like little more than a source of public embarrassment and I began to question why we needed religion in the first place. Religion is life, and life is religion. Maybe this was all just a bunch of nonsense somebody made up a long time ago. Despite my growing skepticism, I remember watching my grandmother perform morning prayers and seeing this great sense of calm sweep over her. That feeling must have come from somewhere. I studied religion in college, hoping to find spiritual answers. But it backfired. I only became more of a skeptic. By the time I was an adult and ready to leave my religion behind, America was embracing the very same tradition I was trying to escape. Yoga had become the answer to all of our Western problems. For me, it's like it's the only time when I kind of like shut down my inner voice. It's like, you should do that. Mm, you should do some weight. Mm, mm, mm. And a $5 billion a year industry. The messengers of this movement called themselves gurus. They dressed like Indian monks and swamis and drew their credibility from thousands of years of Indian spirituality, whether they had a claim to it or not. So tired. I wanted to know if these spiritual leaders were for real or just full of it. So I started to make a documentary about them. You know, I think he's right up there in the ranks of the angels. Uh, and I've been waiting for a teacher like this for so long, Vikram. No. Many were all too willing to enjoy the fruits of their power. If I was a 20-year-old girl, I would love hanging out with you. you follow me? I would just love it. He's the new teacher of this age, of this world. He's having sex with all the young girls. He cannot be a real guru. Why not? He's the one who has the answer. That's what I believe. What could be more fabulous than having sex with a really spiritual, mystical person? Wow. These people insisted they were somehow different than everyone else in some inexplicable way. But none of them seemed any different to me. So how do you figure out who's real? Only the one who carries that power to transmit it non-verbally. That's how you know. I traveled to India hoping to find a true spiritual teacher that I could believe in. But the Indian gurus were just as phony as the ones I had found in America. When I was eight, I was given this divine touch by my master. One touch, just he touched me like here. And a lot of the gurus I met claimed to be more authentic than other gurus. They don't teach the spiritual, just they get money from them. And they say, OK, make long beard, make long red luck like a baba, dress like a baba. I felt like the gurus were trying to out-guru each other. To go to God and to live a spiritual is very different. And very difficult to live a spiritual life. Even people who said they weren't gurus were often treated by others as if they were. I guess my problem wasn't with spirituality. It was just with spiritual leaders. Why did we need them? Oh, there's a store. Let's go shopping. <laughs> She's sexy. Huh? Fucking sexy, man. Yeah. Huh? I wanted to prove to others who are looking for answers that no one is more spiritual than anyone else, that spiritual leaders are just illusions, and we are the ones who decide who and what is real. So I thought, what if I became a spiritual leader? If I could do it, wouldn't it prove anyone could? 
With a few cosmetic changes, I could easily look like a guru. So I let my hair grow out and my beard. I started practicing yoga and meditation every day. I felt the effects almost immediately. Now all I needed was to imitate my grandmother's voice. Hello. <laughs> First, it was fun. It was a prank. Hello. How are you? Good to meet you, Guru. Nice to meet you. Is that how you go by? Is there another name we should call you? What would you like to call me? I don't know. You told me I should call you Guru. Yes. Very good. I wanted to try out my disguise in a more formalized setting. So I got my friend to book my Guru Alter Ego as a guest teacher at a local yoga studio. Can you just... Uh, I created a series of made-up chants. And I taught nonsense rituals and yoga moves. People seem to like it. I thought of that inner peace I found while sitting with my grandmother. Was that real? Could people find the same peace from a made-up religion that they found in a real one? Could I really pull this off? I felt connected to you right away. Um, something about you. I was like, I don't know, like I was like, I'll just follow him anywhere. This is the story of the biggest lie I've ever told and the greatest truth I've ever experienced. It's about the time I pretended to be a wise guru from the East and started a following of real people in the West. This is the story of Kumare. It was time to start my experiment living as the Guru Kumare. I chose Phoenix, Arizona because I figured people there would be open to the teachings of an Eastern Guru. And if I was going to pull this off without getting caught, I needed a place where nobody would recognize me. I was going to need help, so I brought with me Purva to book events and Kristen to help spread Kumare's teachings to the yoga world. They would be Kumare's first followers and greatest public supporters. Together, we set out to spread the teachings of Sri Kumare. This was our house and our temporary ashram. I moved my bedroom outside so I could sleep like all the gurus and swamis I had met in India. I taught Kristen my fake yoga moves and began writing down the basics of a Kumare philosophy. As a guru, all I would teach people was that I was an illusion. But in order to find students I could teach this to, I needed to establish myself in the community. So Purva began booking classes. OK, see you Sunday for three hours. <laughs> OK, bye. Booked. So it's Inner Vision Studio in uh, Phoenix. They have like three or four locations. And I mean, it's such a huge place that I, I personally think we'll get like 40, 50 people in there. 
Good job. rather than a, a name like any of us have. This is um, from uh, the Kumari Sutra, uh, chapter 3, section 12. The seeker who finds the teacher feeds himself with the milk of wisdom, like a child at a mother's teat, nurtured by faith in the dream of Pinkaloka. Right side, this side. Right side, left side. This is good for when we're feeling stuck. In what part of life you use yoga to help? Life problems sometimes heal from yoga. I have a really stressful job. What your job is? I'm a death penalty attorney. Oh! <laughs> I'm the one who, at the last minute, tries to call the governor to save the life of my client who's going to be killed by the government. Okay. You need someone to be that one who calls your governor to save you. Yeah. Can you teach me? Yes. <laughs> it's fascinating, but it's very dangerous because your heart gets bound up with these people. All people who want to do good, they sometimes forget. They also have to do good for themselves. Kamari is more than a teacher, you know. He's more than just putting you through the asanas and all that. It, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. you were all wonderful. And Toby was a smart lady, and much to my surprise, she felt a connection to Kumari. As much time as he can spend, I would be happy to spend. In order to find more people like Toby, we needed to spread the word. We know the answers inside. We just need someone to bring it out in us, and that's what he does. We'll submit it up. So everybody's truth is going to be different. I see myself in other people, and people I know will look at myself and see what they want to see. I met Guruji, and I swear he's fresh out of the Himalayas. There's something about him that is truly unique. He's just a simple man. There's nothing uh, phony about him. Kumare is a being that is open towards everything in a non-judgmental way. The more students I met and classes I taught, the more it seemed the Kumari movement could take hold. I just wanted to have a little bit of your energy. The people that feel that connection towards him, and they see him, and they're like, TG, TG, bring it in, bring it in. People were asking for my blessing, so I just started to imagine I had this blue light, this pure love inside me, and I would just shoot it onto them. I didn't know what I was doing, but people seemed so fascinated by me. He just has this infectious laugh. You, know, you feel like you've known him all your life. <laughs> For some reason, I just know that I'm going to have a little bit more time with this guy. Kumare, kumare, kumare. Kumare, kumare, kumare. I kept inventing my own spiritual jargon. And what I was saying often made little sense. Why? This one you say like Om. Mm -hmm. But because we say that, whole world change. My backstory was equally convoluted. That's why I ask, where are you from? I say, Alikash, this one from my mind. You have problem? <laughs> Basically, I was just telling everybody I was fake. This whole thing like a show, right? Oh, this one, this guy in a dress looking this, all show. <laughs> As Vikram, I defined myself as where I lived, who I knew. But as Kumari, I was nobody. I was an empty vessel. They call me Kumari. Kumarle. Kumari. 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 Hey, my English isn't that good. And for once, I was capable of anything. When he would focus on the different chakras, 
was just on fire. It was very powerful. And it was interesting trying to teach a Himalayan yogi master some magic tricks. Oh. Done today. But he pulled it off really well. Why did everyone love being around Kumari? I actually immediately felt better in his presence. It's the first time I've ever had contact with a genuine guru. Hey, I'm from a place called the Alikash. Excuse me? And why did I love being him? I like to play games. Okay. All the time. I also like to play games. That was my job. You are where you are, you are looking intently. Very nice. Right here. Get out of my head! No. <laughs> this symbol is your religion symbol? No, no. It's just Mickey Mouse. I could tell that he was very, very special before I even met him. There's a, a white glow um, in tight against your body. It's so pure and bright and white. It's just absolutely beautiful. Living as Kumari was starting to rub off on me. It's like when your mother tells you, be careful what face you make because it'll stay like that. I feel myself getting warmer than normal. I'm sure that's your energy. And I see behind you the whole sea of other Kumares, and they all stand behind you, and they just rise behind you. I see almost a V. It feels that it is your turn to be here and be the embodiment of that energy now. It's as if you marinated in it before you came here. I would see him in an ascended master status. It, it just seems a little different than some of the others I experienced. I, I, I'm sure there's realms that I've never witnessed or experienced. Can you see a Vikram mark? I'm not sure what that is. What I see is purple with the red above. And I feel Metatron, Archangel Metatron. What is illusion? What is truth? You don't know if I am good, I am bad. You don't know that. All you know is how you see people act. The illusion aspect of it to me was, you know, we create who we are. Thank you. Yes. Bobby. Bobby. I started noticing the same people returning to class. There was Kimberly, who often sat quietly in the back and never spoke to me. Greg, who was always eager to get a spot in the front. And Stuart, who loved eating free samples at grocery stores. But you can get a lot of little samples. Yeah. And sometimes when you go there, it's not just for the food, it's because you know the people giving it to you and you talk to them and it becomes like a little community, like you're talking. Yeah, I to a trade I, I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then there was Emily, who very quickly began to confide in me about her personal life. Remember, I have a husband too. Okay. He's, he's a polarity of me. So it's hard when it's hard when you can't reflect one another. You have to take fake. Take some time. Take fake. Fake. I don't know his history. It's not something that he brings to the table. It's not the point. Oh, you are not average. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh. I would love to know him even more, but I don't. You know, this is just my impression of, you know, a couple hours here and there. It's okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. I will. Thank you. See you soon. See you yeah. soon. <laughs> okay, I well don't. Kumari's presence in Phoenix was taking shape. 
But the real test would be if people stayed interested even after I'd left for a while. So I went to Tucson, where a man named Daryl had invited me to share in his unique spiritual practice. Greetings, come in. <laughs> when he came, I didn't know what to think, to be honest with you. I did look up on the web, you know, and saw some things about him, and I was really excited about him coming. In the Bible, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word is vibration, sound, okay? God is sound. The sound that intoxicates, the sound that's bliss and ecstasy, that's what I teach people, to find the sound in their body. My teaching, this is a, a fake, a fake one. They want Kumare, be guru. Yeah. I say, okay, mm. come. Mm. But then I say, no, I'm not. <laughs> they realize that one, you know, know that. You know yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Always. And so then we went back to the healing room and uh, I did a session with him. And hold, hold. Arm down at your side, good. Keep holding, keep holding. Let your body drop, let everything go through you and just feel yourself getting lighter and lighter. the breath going? Yeah. That's good. Good, good. Pure pleasure. Breathe it up. Joy and divine bliss, which is our birthright. I had goosebumps coming all over my arms. As soon as I would look at him or connect with the energy, it would just go all over me. Yeah. Two more. Now hold it, inhale. Hold it, keep holding. Come back, I got you, I got you. Keep holding, keep holding. And I don't know what that means, but it just felt like there was some memory, some remembrance coming there uh, because his spirit is so beautiful and I just was in alignment. your hands you offer this sound out to the room like a big ball of blue light inside middle of room don't worry make your sound say your sound everyone together say your sound when you come up you are release blessing gave a blessing um, to me because I am too often enthralled by the sound of sound instead of the silence of sound. Thank you very much for that blessing connected with that. Namaste. The power of illusion was greater in Tucson than I'd ever imagined. I knew I would never see these people again. Hello. Mr. Lane. So I wanted to see how far I could push it. So I have a Western doctoral degree from the university. You are a doctor yes. of philosophy. Yes. This is how I move your own symbol of happiness, Senor. Because that is all people wanting. 
in the to find happiness. So you can uh, open eyes and you look, see your feeling. You will have to use this image like a mirror. All symbol, just a symbol, nothing inside altar. It felt like uh, experiencing bliss and light, and I can uh, feel the energy of him and I connecting in the ritual. He's someone who I can express my energy through, and he could express energy through me. Full moon is tomorrow. Do you watch the moon? Sometimes women have more feeling from moon than men. Than yes. men. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. 28 day cycle. Mm. <laughs> I love your house. You like my bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> You're making me have some ins inspired. I'm totally inspired. What you have been thinking for last week about your life? I'm very aware of power versus force, and I feel like I've been forcing my marriage to work for a long time, and forcing and fighting. Do you remember that person you were when you first meeting your husband? Was this someone different, you? Mm. No. I don't even believe in marriage. He's not the same. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I don't want to be there. Mm. I want to go. <laughs> so. Do you that's feel easy. Uh, alone without a man in your life? No, I never did. So. Um, I get to do whatever I want now. <laughs> what do you think? What do you feel? Would a real guru have told her to ditch her husband and become his student? I wanted to tell her to stay with her husband, but I barely knew this woman. Despite this costume, I wasn't in any place to advise someone I didn't really know. Within a week, Emily had left town for California. The longer I stayed in Phoenix, the more people approached me with deep personal questions and stories of suffering. Uh, what, what do you do when you're feeling down and depressed? What is that? What, what do you do when you're feeling down and depressed? What do you usually do? It wasn't always easy to hear or respond to. We had a, a very mean father. He beat and um, sexually abused all of us kids. And he would tell us, if we told our mom, he would kill our mom. So we had to be quiet and not say anything, you know. The truth was that under this beard and this outfit, I was just like them. Okay, so my family is from this place. It was not sure Ali Kash, but we don't advertise that place. So when we come to visit you, how do we get a hold of you? <laughs> Email? You will find, don't worry. Ah, uh, see, I like the way Guruji eats. Mm -hmm. That's and that's Olive. what you're supposed to eat with raw foods. Yeah. I used to drink a lot. I used to, you know, chase women. I used to do all sorts of things. Okay. On top of all that, I developed a cocaine habit, and so I um, used coca, to coca. cocaine. I used to inject it. Cocaine in arm. Okay. My life spiraled down. Okay. This one night, you know, I'd, I'd been up all night smoking crack. And that morning she came back and, and she said, um, Greg, I'm leaving. And I said, okay, um, I need to go get help. And so six years ago is when I got clean. And so then we had to repair our lives together. It took a while. And when we got married, the one thing we knew we were going to, going to do is put God first. And, and, and helping others became the most important thing. The most important thing, just what you're doing right here by coming here and helping others, the most important thing you can do. 
Yeah. Was I helping anyone? Was I even capable of helping anyone? Despite my self-doubt, more and more people wanted to meet Kumare. An organic farm near the Mexican border called Avalon Gardens had invited me to teach a yoga class during their annual Be Aware Festival. And you bring this pelvis up. Don't squeeze your buttocks, just bring this one up, soft. After class, I took some time to get to know the students. How did you know to come to this place? When I came and met Gabriel and Neon, I knew that that prophecy of when I was 12 years old from my Mormon church had come true, that I found the strange new language, the fifth epical revelation and continuing. We're from different planets. We were told we're spirit lovers. Spirit lovers? Spirit lovers. We're from different planets. You are from? Same universe. Avalon is the universe. Yes. I am from the planet Solano. Okay. And she is from the planet Alcyon. Okay. This place was unique and it all had something to do with a man named Gabriel. The Urantia book is called Urantia because the Urantia is the name of our planet according to the inhabited worlds of time and space. But it has to do with allowing uh, beings to take over my body and speak through me. My soul uh, <laughs> it, uh, it has evolved to, to uh, where they can trust me, uh, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, purity of soul. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hope you I see know, that. I hope you can see that. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> NBC's Dateline had done an hour-long investigation on Gabriel of Urantia. <laughs> they claimed he forced people to give up their belongings and their identities to their cosmic family. All I saw was a group of positive and kind-hearted environmentalists who had decided to remove themselves from the capitalist pains of American life. For greener, more epic pastures. Knock, knock. Looking like small people. I know. Looking like, what is that one? The Hobbits. Yes, that one. <laughs> this is a Hobbit house. Do you watch movies? I, I watch, I like a movie. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm director. <laughs> Over 100 people lived in or around this 80-acre compound, some for nearly 20 years. They grew their own food and had plans to move off the grid. You give some direction, life direction, you give them. We have a, uh, uh, a rehabilitation program for what, uh, uh, what we call socially disappointed uh, people, <laughs> young people, that can't deal with the uh, the, the system. They can't deal with the third dimension, actually. We call our reality the fourth dimension. Everyone seemed genuinely happy. But is this how cults get people to join them? By showing them how happy they are? Isn't that what people saw in Kumare? <laughs> The next morning, Gabriel sat me down to tell me what really inspired him to start Urantia. I didn't realize it, but I was physically taken onto a craft, a spacecraft. But they cut it out of okay. Yeah, they cut it out of my memory until years later, and they brought it back. And they said that I would have what's called the mandate of the bright and morning star. These people know that they need you? What, the, what people? These? Yeah, the people. Oh, uh, student, no, yeah. they know yeah. that they need you. They know you, they need you. Yes. After 20 years, Gabriel still insisted he was the community's only connection to God. He reminded me why I created Kumari in the first place, to show that leaders like him were just illusions. I always planned to unveil my true identity. But first, as Kumari, I had to teach something I believed in. And I would start with my own story. First teacher of Kumare, his name is Avikrama. Basic family, his father was a medicine man. His mother, his mother named Jyoti, which means a light, but a basic family. At that time, he is becoming a teacher 
for many people, and he is the only one who did not know that he was a teacher. Mm -hmm. Why is it that? Because he is feel like a disguise. He is living in a disguise. But all these people, they feel good. So if other people have an idea for that story, if their same story they have in themselves, because a certain tree bears a certain fruit. Their actions, what they do, their service. Yes. Mm -hmm. To others, how they treat others. That's what I hear. And then the story you're telling me, I think you're talking about yourself. <laughs> Always talking about self, yes. <laughs> Thank you for your time. here trying to learn about American culture and this society. Since we're both learning from each other, I just feel like there's a kind of harmonious connection going on there. In many ways, Kumari was an ideal version of myself. So if other people could create an ideal version of themselves, maybe they would become happier too. So what are you, you are doing now? In your life, you are doing what? I don't know, I'm like kind of stuck. I don't want to jump into a career. I don't want to put on a suit and go to work every day in an office and sit at a computer and type all day. That doesn't seem fun to me. Nice. I want to be able to, you know, go with the flow, change with the wind, you know? <laughs> go with the flow? Yeah. Change with the wind? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you can imagine yourself as someone else mm -hmm. that you feel is more true than you are you are formed now, then you can make those two become one. Then you will not have a, some feeling that I am not doing what I want. You will always feel. Is it right? We call this one a blue light meditation. The blue light was another thing I had made up. This one good, but you do slow together. But now it was becoming something real. And you look, focus, other person face into eyes, okay? Until you feel yourself inside other person, okay? Imagine that. Why? Why? And for the first time, I felt the blue light. There are so many gurus in India. I've seen many of them, they are just fake. They are just fake gurus because they just want attention and maybe money and fame. But meeting Kumare, I thought he had the positive mind and attitude. So I think he's a real teacher. Only your reflection, your mind, your blue self, pure self. His teachings is, have already affected my teachings. It uh, just confirms for me how much people want to know more and they don't know where to start. They're searching for something, for answers. You can come like this. You're looking very comfortable. You can also come like that. Mm -hmm. In religion, they have a temple, church, all this idea. But this space, like you call sacred space. But you did not need that. Illusion is that this place is somehow better than outside. It is very nice dish, I think. <laughs> but you can find yoga center inside. If you can bring yoga center inside, remember yoga center inside you, you will get that feeling you have in here outside. Tish insisted on hosting a concert in honor of Sri Kumare. I wanted to understand what she saw in me. I feel like there's these other great teachers that have things to pass on, and I don't know if I do. I feel like I've hit a ceiling somewhat to what I can convey. What do you see in uh, this Kumare lineage that you have some interest in? I know exactly what it is, and it was the meditation where you were um, talking about the blue light and that we all have what we're searching for within ourselves. Uh, and, and your meditation was more direct than anything I've read or experienced. If I teach you this uh, blue light meditation, mm -hmm. and then you, you see, 
I, I understand this Kumari man, he is not right. I believe in him, then he is not right, I don't like. Mm -hmm. Then will you throw that meditation? Would I? Probably not. <laughs> no. It is good. Yeah, no. Yeah. So that is more important. Kirtan is my thing, I love it, and that's what I could offer, and Tish loves it, so we could do that as kind of a thank you gesture for Sri Kumari. I consider Kumari to be a living embodiment of the divine. So I, I just want to make sure that I was welcoming him and honoring him in a way that matched who he is. I guess what he's helped me remember is the illusion that we're separate from God. And that, that a guru, you know, of God realization is no, more, is no more closer to God than we are. He has listeners because it, people could benefit from him, and I'm very grateful to him. The three of us, we have um, law of attraction groups, and we, we teach and we share law of attraction with people here in Phoenix. And we don't have to worry about the science part. We just need to just know that it's happening. You have a fit in this one. Absolutely. Just like the law of gravity works. Yeah. When we have our meeting groups, say indeed Eric and I, we teach people different ways because everybody's different, right? And some people like to have something to look at. So we teach them how to create um, vision boards. We call them vision boards. Vision. 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 I had a desire to go to Africa and to work with the children and to so I put a vision board like with the children in Africa here I wanted to go there and teach them and teach them you know um, yoga teach them all kinds of things but I didn't know that the man that I loved was gonna be in Africa it just all showed up together oh, based on my vision okay. my feelings that's law of attraction you look in a magazine and find your dream yes then you say I want to have a this house and this car and if yeah. you believe that then you will get this house and this sure, car. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of that, we're actually going to be having a, a group meeting on Thursday that we want to invite you to. We'd love for you to come and meet more people that, that study Law of Attraction. It's going to be a real intimate group. We're thinking probably about 10, 15 people are going to be there and they'd like to all share their experiences with you and, and have you learn more about Law of Attraction. I will make my vision board and come. Good. Welcome to our Law of Attraction meeting. Who's excited to be here tonight? Yeah. All the way from India, ladies and gentlemen, Sri Kumare. Yeah. <laughs> Law of Attraction is your mood or feelings or vibration create your reality. Who wants to say kabam for me? Let's, let's, let's build some energy up. Ready? I'll say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Kabam! <laughs> We're going to talk about lots of things today, but the main, the main goal tonight of our, of our group is to talk about visualization. To me, abundance isn't all about money, and so I put a certain amount of money down here because sometimes I forget that I need to connect with that, um, but it's not what drives me. So uh, it works. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. You're going to sit down a second. Okay. <laughs> does that, but does he? Who does thinks it's a wonderful understand? evening out tonight? Because we're going to finish this outside. They, they've asked us to leave. We have to leave the building right now. Oh, geez. So, yeah, I know. It isn't, it isn't that exciting, is it? <laughs> I know the next thing I want to do, we have, a lot, we have a few more things to cover, but I really want to see Kumare's uh, vision boards. Who wants to see Kumare's vision boards? I do a little bit, but yeah. Oh, okay. This one is uh, myself a student. All-time photograph, myself student. This one is myself a teacher. So... That is why I want to combine my old self, Vikram, with my current self, Kumari, so that I have an inside peace with all the balance. This one is a symbol for happiness, and so that is why I put all these people 
and I put a smile. A smile. Yeah. So that this one, all these people, they will, after uh, unveiling, they will also have uh, the same happiness that they have when meeting me. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Yeah. I love your do, vision board. Sorry, thank we you. can do kabam mantra together. Kabam. kabam. Okay, kabam. Okay. One, two, three. Kabam. kabam. <laughs> So this was actually kind of like a vision board. And then look who's in my house right now. So, so that's kind of like the way law of attraction works. Kamari so talks a lot about the illusion. You trick us. <laughs> yes, big trick. He has great knowledge. I believe he's like kind of prophet. I am the biggest faker that I know. I fake so much, I forget who I was before. I mean, I've done other personal development work, but this time I felt like, and I've said this to a few people in the group, that it changed my DNA. Two days before I met you, Kamari, I lost my job. We've been going through a lot of changes already from him coming here because he can't work because he's not a resident. So all of this happened just two days you know, before we met you. <laughs> so. And that was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Karuji showed up in time to just kind of like take us by the hand, so to speak, and just kind of help us find the way to do this big vision. Cha! Cha! this great power to make the others happy. I think it's very, very amazing. I feel very blessed. It's probably the most amazing thing that ever happened to my life. A core group of disciples had emerged, so we invited them into our home. So what was it about him that made you come here? Nothing really let me know that this, is, this guy is, you know, what I've been looking for. But. I went home, and I, and, I, and I couldn't get him out of my mind. And the next day, I couldn't get him out of my mind. You know, I just kept thinking about him, just kept thinking about him. And, 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 and the thoughts were always good. They were always very positive. Everything about him was very positive. It's like a snowball rolling downhill. It, it's like, wow, this guy, I got to see this guy. And, and I was talking to my wife today. I was saying, you know, I said, you know, you might not like this one, but I think I love this man. <laughs> <laughs> what he's bringing is like science. It's like law of attraction, right? He's a doctor, actually, he's a doctor, right? Kumari came along and said, well, you don't really need, you know, here's the idea. I'll help you to find whatever's inside you, but you're gonna have to teach yourself. You know, and I can teach you how to teach yourself that, but I'm not gonna be here, you know, which is true of all teachers. They don't stick around. Kumari was a reflection of everyone's dreams not just my own. Kumari was a mirror, a tool that allowed people to look inside themselves. Basic idea of mirror philosophy is identity. What I am doing, myself, my life, my student is, is uh, creating that dream life and real life together. And whole point is to use uh, this process, this teaching, through myself, to use as a mirror for yourself. You create inside your mind which direction you will go. Easy one. You just use that like this. So that you can calm your energy together and lose some identity. You lose all that feeling in your body. You begin to remove all the inside. Feel your mind become like a pathway and begin to feel the blue light and offer your hands out to center. I had found my teaching and it was something I believed in. Now I found my students. There was Greg, who saw Kumari's simple lifestyle and wanted it. Stuart, a retired salesman who was looking for a way to connect with people. Molly, 
who had a lot of people telling her what to do and liked that Kumari didn't. Teresa and her new husband Riyadh, who saw in Kumari a self-help teacher they could learn from. Toby, who sought an escape from her stressful job. Rachel, a medical student, and her boyfriend Bobby, an entrepreneur. And Kimberly, a single mother coping with the reality of an empty nest. Today, I embrace illusion to find truth. <laughs> time I had left with my students, I wanted to teach them that they could help themselves and that they never needed a guru in the first place. I just can't believe that you would come and spend this much time with individuals. So this one, Stuart, is like your identity. You have to break down all the feelings. The things he's told me are the things that I know I should be doing. Hello. Kamari's impact on our relationship will be positive. I, I think it's, it's already there. Do you want to know every truth about him? Probably not. And do you want to know every truth about her? I would say probably not, you know? <laughs> you can't feel really the change inside you. That's very exciting. number one! He has the most peaceful energy, and you can feel it around him, and it seems to touch the people that he comes in contact with. You could perceive from Kamari all of the wonder and excitement and enthusiasm for everything. This is the gas bathroom. Yes, to the toilet. Okay. Very beautiful toilet. Thank you. <laughs> yes. We shall sit here. Yeah. Yes, on the floor. Would you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The kind of law that I practice is really life and death, literally. Yeah. It's usually murder plus something especially awful. Why do you want to help those people? Because nobody else will. You know, there are people that society's thrown away. That there isn't, even their own families don't talk to them most of the time. When somebody else shows interest in what you're interested in, it makes you want to know them better. It makes you want to, to learn as much as you can. Your place of like your heaven is that underneath the sea place, yes? I scuba dived a lot. I dive um, as much as I can. So you have this one on mm -hmm. face, mm -hmm. and you are going down? Right. You jump in. You're breathing, you're, now you're at 20 feet or so, and you're starting to see some coral and some things. You're gonna kick a little bit, and there's just deep blue water beneath you. You have a very good imagination. <laughs> Maybe this one good meditation for you. I, I, you it's only good, five I was looking minutes. at the shell. Ooh. You can imagine the cat is also <laughs> some catfish happening. Catfish. Let's dive a wreck. We're going to dive a wreck. <laughs> and all of a sudden we see two big, huge green moray eels. They're big. Big old sharp head, with big old sharp teeth, and they have their mouths open. Yes. Big old mouths open. You know how when you see somebody that you haven't seen for a very long time, and you run hug them and you cry because you're happy to see them? That's the only kind of way I can explain it, but that um, I felt very much an affinity for Kumari. All right. I think we're good now. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you on Thank Saturday. Thank you. So the exercise you will do with Guruji is called Identity Transference. And what you will do is imagine that you are Guruji and that Guruji is you. 
Tell him the five commands that you've written to yourself as if you are speaking to yourself. You will meditate one hour every day. First thing you need to do is pay off your bills. Good money's a problem. I want you to love yourself. To stop going out to stores all day long and eating free food. And to give yourself a hug every oh, 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 day. Okay. I broke your board. Okay, okay. You will think positive whenever you talk with the others. And you will stop taking your neighbor's newspaper and reading it and putting it back. My thoughts all the time. This one is uh, to remember. You are doing action. This whole thing is a big trick to help people realize that they do not need a guru. That everything they want, all their happiness is inside themselves. That the same good that you see inside this man, you also have inside yourself. That you did not need a, a guru to make yourself happy. Because the truth is that I am only the same as everyone here. And everyone here to me has become my greatest gurus in my life. Look at your candle of light. That is a reflection of your light inside. You can put this light inside the water. This uh, ideal self is now entering the ocean that has all problem of life. And your ideal self must go inside the water. I've been looking for something to help me look inside myself. This is my daughter, and this is my only one. I have three boys and my daughter, mm -hmm. and she's the baby. Mm -hmm. She's just the one that went started college this year. That's my daughter-in-law, her getting ready. Good. My kids are very blessed. They have great partners. The same father? Yes, all of them have the same father. Okay. Yeah, we divorced about 20 years ago. Okay. He's not been in their life too much. It was meant to be. I was meant to meet him, have my children. They were the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. They're my, they are actually my success. My children are, I think. So, you know, it happens. It was hard. I worked two or three jobs. Um, oh. Yeah, I was always working. I'd sleep maybe two hours, three hours a day. But how do you give to yourself now? That's the hardest thing. I don't know how. When you're a person that gives a lot to return and do it for yourself, I feel selfish. I feel like I'm a bad person because I do. So it's hard. It's hard to love self as much as to do. It is. I do know what to need to do. I just need somebody to listen. I need somebody to guide me and, and to help me, not telling me this is what you need to do, like getting a trainer, do this. If I get a trainer, I'm like, forget it. I'm not going to do it because I'm stubborn. I won't do it. And imagine that you are self is living. So when you give your teaching, you, you will tell because you have the answer inside. I am your student, OK? You are to eat a good diet without any, too much starch and too much fats and do not take any bad things to, into your body as in drinking or food. And some, there is some temptation in my life. Yes, yeah, stay away from the people that don't care about you, that don't love you, and only be with the people that do love you. Kamari is a real-life person, and he's always true and real. And, and it, it, in his teachings, he's here to help people, and it's just, and you can feel that. You can feel that. 
Joe is a good person. It's nice to be around good people. Tomorrow is an in interesting and important day. Tomorrow is the great unveiling. Today we are focusing on enactment. It's all about bringing our practice into the world today. So it's not just about ourselves anymore. We've done a lot of visualization going inside. Now it's all about going outside and seeing how we're going to apply the best in ourselves to the world. So I need help with today, just clearing out this stuff. Yes. Yes. Whole place look complete different. With only 15 people in one hour do that. One man do will take one week. Not 15 hours, one week. Yes. So before you look outside for Guru, then you look yourself, and you have everyone else. Because after tomorrow. I will not be here. The only way to complete the mirror teaching would be to unveil my true identity. But I was struggling to find the right words. Would they understand what I was trying to teach them? Or would they hate me? I went to visit my friend John Rogers at his New Age bookstore for some inspiration. Is not all this one like a religious symbol for people? All this one you are selling? Some are symbols and some are tools. Like the crystals you see are tools. Okay. You How is it different? A symbol is only meaning, but a tool does stuff. Do you believe that it is doing or your mind is doing? Depends on what it is. Because then symbol also can be tool, yes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Buddha, I believe Buddha said, at least he said to have said, if you see Buddha on the road, kill him. Why, do you, why did you think he said that? Because you're not supposed to believe or worship things. And if you're worshiping a man, you've missed it. not who you think that I am. My name is Vikram and I am from New Jersey. I am not who you think that I am. Place this over your head just to create an external sense of discipline. Ritual creates discipline as well. It makes us take something seriously. I am not who you think I am. that it's your inner teacher that is doing the watching and the greeting and the smiling. Look into the person's eyes, take a deep breath, get set, Go. I'm becoming the blue light. I'm becoming the blue light. Breath, what action will it take? I will believe that I can become my imagination.
we're ready to start. Guruji will be coming out shortly. And before we start, I think Sundari would love to lead you all in just a brief why. Since we haven't done it yet today. Today is uh, the unveiling. At the unveiling, we are uh, unveil our true self. And uh, to begin, I will reveal my true self. You see, I don't know if uh, I am who you think that I am. You see, I am not who you think that I am. But I am only just a very simple man who had an idea, a dream to show every person that I meet that they have some power for self transformation for happiness inside. You are all great beings and you must stop pretending that you are not. So today you will unveil the Guru inside of you. I've learned that there's fearlessness in all of us. I know what I need to do. I just need to keep my promises and to be strong against my temptations. It's time to get rid of that old identity and embrace the new. I should do, uh, do less talking and do more doing. I'll make the promise and I'll do what I've promised to do to change my life. Everything is about commitment to oneself and to others. More love and joy comes to you when you have decided not listening to others, but inside of yourself, your purpose. that we have created. All of you will live inside my heart forever. I could not unveil. As I stood in that circle holding everyone's hands, I realized I had connected more deeply with people as Kumare than I ever had as Vikram. <laughs> Thank you. 
experience with Kamari has affected my life, and I feel like it has changed my teaching. It's given me uh, the same thing that the students feel, that confidence. And so being a part of the lineage and having the blessing of Kamari has been very helpful. I will always remember Kamari. I will remember from the day I die, I will tell my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandkids about this wonderful person that came into my life and changed me. I am completely in love with him. He basically reflects this love that I have, and he reflects it to me in this way that's like the most love I've ever experienced. Every day when I meditate, because I do meditate every day now, <laughs> that's on my list. It's five things I have to do. Um, I, I thank Kumari. It's not familial. It's not, it's not like we've been through any um, difficult times together. It's just there's this attachment, and, and, maybe, and that's, that's that love. I wear this, and I feel very good because it reminds me. Yeah, it reminds me, and I should be like this and like that. No anger, nothing, it's just uh, be the guru who I am. And imagining a blue light. Using the blue light meditation will help people to find their own guru within. Practice yoga at least three times a week, yes. Work out elliptical two times a week, yes, I'm doing that. And I also do weight training because I stuck that in there. All to total from September, I've lost 70 pounds. This is a dress that I couldn't wear previously. Not bad, huh? I'm planning on getting my yoga instructor certification this next semester, which I've wanted to do for years, and I've never had the courage to do it because I'm like, oh, what will people think of me, or this or that. So I decided I'm doing it. Every day, if there's something, some little thing I can do, I will do it. And, and, I, and I just have to make it a point to keep it in my head that today is the day that I'm going to do something for my wife. That gives me tears. <laughs> because I never used to be this way. He says he doesn't teach anything, but that's not true. Because if you can teach someone how to think, then you really are, you are a true teacher. Hello, Bobby. I return your call to Teresa. Yes, hello, Kimbali. Hello, Rachel. This is Kumari. So what do you believe that you should do? I did not say anything. I said nothing you do. But all this you did yourself. I am only a strange man who come to visit for one small time. I also think about you very much. Yes, I think about you and all the disciples. All the students, so much. I mean, I was telling Riyadh, I'm like, I think that he's in our life forever. That's how we feel. He's not necessarily like a father figure to me, but I look up to him like he knows more than me. I just see him as a guy. And, and, I, and that, for that, I'm truly grateful. Now you must understand my teaching, that the external guru is an illusion, that he only exists to help you find the truth, that the guru is inside of you. In many ways I am the same as you. I was born here in the USA and grew up in New Jersey. I am a U.S. citizen, but how do these effects differ?
find my true self. They don't. But something inside me does. As a young man, I reflected and realized that my identity was an illusion. My curiosity brought me to meet many swamis and sadhus and priests and saints and gurus. But none of them would say one thing that I truly believed. That you don't need them. You don't need anyone outside yourself to make you happy. So I said, if I were to become a guru, that I would teach this one thing. That the guru you are looking for is inside of you. So this is the basis of the Kumari teaching, a teaching that I created. I am the first Kumari, but I hope that I am not the last. In each of you, there is a Guru inside that I can see. It has given me strength. It has given me purpose. This is a teaching I believe in with all my heart and every cell of my body. So now, I would like to introduce you to the Guru inside of me. Hello Gurus, my name is Vikram and my ideal self is Kumari. Thank you. 